Uh, Allegro is a little different case. Do you all know the book, The Sacred Mushroom and the Cross? He managed to hypothesize one of the most radical theories ever to come down the pike. I don't know how true it is, but his theory is that Jesus was a mushroom. <laughs> and, you know, this would not probably have cut too much mustard, except that the guy was a Dead Sea Scroll scholar of world renown, uh, had a, a scholar's grasp of Aramaic, and uh, Akkadian and was fully licensed to be one of the people who tell us what the primary documents of Christianity really mean. The problem was when Allegro got a hold of them, he said, well, what they really mean is uh, that uh, a sacramental mushroom was go being grown in caves by Nabataeans down around Qumran and they called it Jesus in order to befuddle the Roman authorities and created the cheerful theory of the friendly carpenter who tells us to render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's. And this was all a publicity stunt just to keep uh, the Roman authorities guessing. And he has textual, he claims he has textual support for this. The problem is you have to be an Aramaic philologist to follow the argument. I mean, the argument is unbelievably tortured. There is a lot of question. There is a peculiar opaqueness about the early history of Christianity. I mean, if we are to try and take it seriously and understand what happened there, then it must be that, it, first of all, if we believe Christ was a real person, then he must have been born in 6 B.C., because there was a conjunctio maxima of Jupiter and Saturn at that time, which is a good astrological event to hang the nativity on, which means then that the crucifixion would have occurred in 27. Well, why is it then that there are no mentions, no mention of Christ can be pushed back later than earlier than AD 69? What was going on between 27 and 69. The Gospels are not contemporaneous and uh, the mention in 69 is not even a sure thing. It's in Suetonius and he says Jews have recently come to Rome agitating in the name of their leader Crespus and that's the reference and uh, you know it's puzzling because take a figure as, as minor as Manai. Manai is the founder of Manichaeanism. He was born in Seleucia Tessaphon in the, in the 700s. Well, God, we have Manai's laundry bills. I mean, we know how much he paid in taxes, uh, the nickname he had for his dog. I mean, we have a lot of data on Manai. And so why a figure like Christ should be so peculiarly swathed in ambiguity if it was a real person with these people eager to chronicle it is a little hard to, to figure out. Didn't Manai have a big religion going in his own lifetime? I mean, kind of a big organization. Of course, Christ has had 12 you know, guys. Yeah, I mean, Manai got right with it. I mean, he cultivated the court. He knew how to get his thing going, yeah. Um, if any of you are interested in these kinds of questions uh, and like your data in novel form, read The Transmigration of Timothy Archer by Philip K. Dick, which is a wonderful intellectual romp through all of these issues. It's essentially the fictional telling of the story of James Pike, who you may remember was the Episcopal Bishop of San Francisco and a great enthusiast for LSD. And he died in the Negev under very mysterious conditions. He parked his car and with a roadside map and a bottle of Coca-Cola, in 115 degree heat started walking toward the sea, the Dead Sea and dehydrated and died and he was very close to John Allegro 
you know, I'm not given to conspiracy theory, but you must have been following this whole hassle about the Dead Sea Scrolls. Well, a lot of people think it's because what is written there is incommensurate with the uh, Christianity as it has existed for 1700 years and nobody knows what to do with this stuff. I mean it's the equivalent of what do you do with the doctrine of the resurrection if somebody comes up with the mummy of Christ. Well that's the kind of uh, situation that these Dead Sea Scrolls may place Christian hermeneutics in. John Allegro's book? No, John Allegro died recently. Sacred Mushroom. Oh, oh no. The, tra the book by Philip K. Dick is called The Transmigration of Timothy Archer. Yeah. Are you aware of Edmund Bordozeki's translation? Oh, yes. He's another one. His, his really tweaking volume was called How the Great Pan Died. Right. And it was an expose of Jesus Barabbas versus this supposed Jesus. And so, yeah. Yes, well... The empire never died, which is Philip K. Dick's motto. Uh, the Gnostic temperament is alive and well. In fact, there hasn't been a century as friendly to Gnosticism as the 20th since the 4th. So there you have it.